Hello good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here and today we're doing kind of a follow-up video to a video I made about six months ago called How Bias is Russian Bias. In that video I kind of compared the Smolensk and the Kremlin to each other saying on you know, the Smolensk this is like obviously Russian bias and the Kremlin this is a little bit of Russian bias but it can be fixed with a couple of tweaks. This video I'm going to take those two ships and compare them to two ships that are very similar to them, have a similar play style and a similar role in the game, and see what advantages that the Kremlin and Smolensk have over the two ships they're going to be compared to. So I originally recorded this video and I went into all the stats and the details and all that, but it was like a 40 minute video. And uh, you know, that's, that's a bit excessive. So Basically, this is the compressed version. I'm just going to go over the advantages and disadvantages that they share with each other. Um, and hopefully this will only be like a 10 or 15 minute video. If you guys want me to do the whole 40 minute video, breaking down the stats and everything, let me know in the comments down below and I'll sure I'll upload it. But um, let's just go ahead and get into it. So for the Smolens, the ship I'm comparing it to is the American Tier 10. A light cruiser, the Wooster, they both have a similar playstyle, they both fulfill a similar role in the game, and there are quite a few diff differences between the two, and we're going to go into those now. So as far as, we're going to start with the guns, by the way, <laughs> we're going to go guns, armor, um, consumables, and then any, anything other, any other special type of things that the ships may have. So starting at the guns, the Wooster has 12 guns. The Smolensk has 16. The Woosters are 152 millimeter guns. The Smolensk are 130 millimeter guns. So that right there gives the Wooster an advantage in terms of pin damage because with IFHE the Wooster can pin 32 millimeters of armor. With IFHE on the Smolensk, and this is being recorded before the IFHE rework goes live, goes live if you're watching this in the future, um, the Smolensk can only pin 28 millimeters of, ar of armor. If you have IFHE on both ships, then they both also have an 8% chance of starting a fire per shell. So right there, the Wooster has the advantage of it can do more pin damage and have the same chance of starting a fire that the Smolensk does. But the Smolensk has four more guns than the Wooster, so it has a better chance of setting fires and can set more fires mathematically than the Wooster can but it cannot get as good pins as the Wooster. So, right there, small ends, obviously better fire starter and not so much doing pins. The Wooster, decent fire starter and it can do pretty, it can get pretty good pins. Alright, and the armor now, this is where the ships really deviate. The guns are kind of similar. The Smolensk has a bit of an advantage there, but the armor, depending upon what way you're looking at it, either the Wooster has a good advantage or the Smolensk has a good advantage, so it's all about what perspective you're looking at it from. The Wooster has actual armor. It has a 127mm Citadel, the Smolensk only has a 70mm Citadel, and the Smolensk side armor is only 30mm, and I think the um, Wooster is, it's, was it like six? I think it's 30... It, Ah, oh, okay, I can't remember, but it has actual. You got, you guys know what I mean. It has actual armor. It has thick armor for a cruiser. Well, I mean, you know, not thick, like battleship armor, but it has thicker armor than the small ends, which means the small ends can easily be overpinned by anything with large guns. Now the Wooster can be punished by anything with large guns, and it's also protected from light cruisers and destroyers as well. Well, the Smolensk, uh, you're kind of screwed if you run across a, another cruiser or even a destroyer. Um, I'm sure most of you guys saw the video um, probably like four or five months ago where I completely just citadel the crap out of a Smolensk using a Friesland of all ships. Um, but any destroyer with decent AP can melt a Smolensk if you catch its broadside. Well, the Wooster, you'd have a much harder time doing that because it does have actual decent armor against cruiser, light cruisers and um, destroyers. But again, you can look at that from that point of view of the spot like isn't as well protected against light cruisers and destroyers, or you can look at it from the point of view of, well, it's much harder to punish the Smolensk if you're in a battleship, which, let's face it, Smolensk players and Wooster players go after battleships because of that damage farming. So it's, again, what are, what are, what's your point of view? It can be a big advantage, it can be a big disadvantage. The Wooster, how we normally deal with Woosters, 
is you know it gets spotted then your big guns uh, take shots at it and really if you're playing like um, anything with 16 inch guns or above you really only need to land like really four or five good shells in, into the Wooster to deal with it or at least cripple it and force him to fall back and repair or go dark and repair so you can have a little bit of breathing space or if it you get really lucky and their citadel hits then he's just out of the game whereas a small lens you either have to be back at maximum range for your shells to really do any damage to him or you have to be in uh, something British or be firing HE which most battleships players don't have HE loaded because you know it's a, it's a battleship. What's the point of having HG loaded when you're trying to pin other battleships' armor? Um, so you have to, you know, switch to HG and hope that your shells connect, or just fire a AP and hope that the stars align, or that the small lens is angled the right way for the shells to connect and detonate and deal with the small lens. Again, I have deleted the small lens before, but again, it's at maximum range, and you know, it's not that common for shells to connect on a very small, fast-moving target at maximum range in the battleship. Alright, so the next up, uh, the consumables. Uh, Wooster obviously has the advantage here. It's got like everything except smoke. It's got a uh, hydro, defensive fire, um, radar, uh, heal obviously, uh, hydroacoustic search, and uh, damage con. Whereas the small lens just gets hydroacoustic search, smoke, heal, and damage con. So Smoke. That's a pretty. That's a pretty big one to have. If the Wooster had smoke, it'd be terrifying. And the Spawn does have smoke. Granted, it's not a very long smoke screen. It's like I think it's like a minute and twenty seconds, or like you know, it's a minute and twenty seconds that it's active. But when you have sixteen guns that can reload in about four seconds flat, that's a pretty useful consumable, and it can still just hug islands anyway. And the Wooster. I mean, obviously, it's like a Swiss Army knife. It's a very much a support cruiser because you get hydro radar. Uh, defensive fire. You know, if you're if your team's having carrier problems, you are the solution in Wooster. Granted, you are the solution as well in small lines. Both ships have very good AA, but um, Wooster does get defensive fire. And also, in addition to those consumables, there's something that Wooster's missing that small lines has, and that's torpedoes. Small lines has very, very, very nice torpedoes for a cruiser. They have an eight kilometer range. Which means they're actually useful if something surprises you, and they they're pretty good as well. Wooster does not get that, but you could also say that's not really that big of an advantage because pretty much every tier ten cruiser has torpedoes, with the exception of like stall of the super cruisers. Except, well, the super cruisers except for Yoshino and Siegfried, whenever that thing comes out, and Mo uh, Mosva. All the other tier ten cruisers have torpedoes except for the Americans. That's just the American thing. So you could say, chalk that up to that, and yeah, I'd give that one to you. Now, the big difference between the Wooster and the Small Lens is the shells. The the Small Lens has Soviet shells, so it's got Soviet ballistics. They're very nice shells. The AP pins very nice when you can, um, when you have a target that you can, that you can pin. And the um, HE also is not the American HE that the Wooster has. It has that floaty American HE, so you have to learn to lead your targets by a lot, and that can be very difficult when you're firing at longer ranges, which both ships, they have about the same range. Uh, I have a similar build on both of them. I have a DPM build rather than a range build, and they're both around 16.7 kilometers, and you can get them out to about 19 kilometers each. So, in that regard, the small does have the advantage. So, just looking at the two ships and looking at their advantages and disadvantages again it's depending upon your point of view because you can say that Spunlux has an advantage if you're a battleship player like me because you know it's hard to deal with it's sh much easier for them for uh, Spunlux players to land tar to land hits on you than Wooster players because of the shells the ship also has torpedoes so unlike the Wooster if you know the Wooster's alone you can charge a Wooster and deal with him. You can't charge a small lens and deal with him because he's got decent torpedoes and he's got hydro and smoke too so if you're if you even get a destroyer buddy to try and torpedo a smoke he's gonna know the torpedoes are coming because he's got any two cents amongst them when he when he pops his smoke he's obviously gonna be popping hydro as well. Or you can go from the point of view of another cruiser player and say, no, Smolensk is pretty easy to deal with because it doesn't have that great of armor. And if you're in something like uh, Alaska or Puerto Rico or any heavy cruiser, really, Smolensk isn't that hard to deal with if you catch him out in the open. 
But you do have to admit that Smox does have quite a few more ups than the Wooster has. The Wooster's got some pretty big downsides, no torpedoes. Um, the armor means you can be pinned by larger caliber guns and even heavy cruisers as well. And you don't have your shells are very floaty. Meanwhile, in the small ones, again, the armor is so thin, bigger shells will go right through you. Your uh, ballistics on your shells are very, very, very nice. And you have smoke screen. That's three really big advantages for a ship like Smolensk. Okay, let's go go on now and move on to the Kremlin. I'm going to be comparing the Kremlin to the Kerr first. So, both ships are definitely mid to close range ships. They both have a maximum range of about 12 kilometers. So the guns, we're starting there. The Kremlin has nine 457 millimeter or 18 inch guns. The of course, the curve first, you have two choices. You have 12 406s or 12 420s. I go with the 420s because they have a bigger punch, and when you're in a brawl, you want that bigger punch if you can get all your guns on target. And the shells, well, both ships have pretty good pens, but again, you've got the Kremlin with those Soviet ballistics, and I've pulled off some pretty crazy shots in the Kremlin because, again, with Soviet ballistics, it's just like... Angling almost doesn't matter on some ships, especially if it's some type of American battleship like an Iowa, Montana, or North Carolina, especially the North Carolina. And they just got absolutely deleted. Plus, the Kremlin gets the Soviet gimmick where the closer you are to the target, the better the dispersion is. And so much so to the point where if you're within 10 kilometers of the target, it's like a, a laser. Now, the Kerfers, you may hear a lot that the closer you are to the target, the better the Germans are, which it is true, but it's not because they don't have any, they have some type of gimmick like the Soviets do, it's because just the closer you are to the target, the more chance you have of your shells hitting something. Now, the Kerfers does have three more guns than the Kremlin, and that is a that is an advantage, but they're not that much more accurate, because again, they're German. They did recently get buffed, it is better than it used to be, but still... It's not as accurate as the Kremlin from closer ranges. So, moving on from that, now the secondaries, the Kerfers has a clear advantage here, and after the IFHE rework comes out, every single secondary on the Grosser Kerfers will be able to pin 32 millimeters of armor. That's a big plus. That's a lot of, da of uh, additional damage coming in, especially if you go with a secondary build. The criminal secondaries aren't even worth mentioning, they're just kind of there, they're more, they, they more so contribute to the AA rather than any type of secondary damage. Now the armor, this is where there's a big difference. The Kerr first has German armor, it's got that turtle back armor, it is nigh unsitadelable from close range. And it does also have a 60mm strip out on the bow that almost meets up and wraps around the bow. And the only place that the Yami can actually pin the GK from the front is from a little T-shaped bow um, strip where the two 60mm plates do not connect. I'll throw a picture of it up on the screen right now. That's the only way a Yami can pin a GK from the bow. Now, that sounds pretty good and all, but then the Kremlin has a very similar setup to the Kerr first in terms of bow armor. It's got 120 uh, like a 128 millimeter strip that that goes down to a 60 millimeter strip, but then it actually wraps completely around the bow of the Kremlin. Now it does have a big 32 millimeter of armor section above that 60 millimeter strip right there, to where the Yami can pin it is a bigger a bigger um, chunk than the GK does, and it does not have any turtle back armor. Its citadel is exposed. Now, it's not very high like the Conqueror and the Thunderous Citadel. It is a bit of a, of a little strip, but it goes like the entire length of the flat side of the ship. So it's not very high, but it's very long. And people complain about not being able to pin the Kremlin, but honestly, I, I've, I've pinned it about this, the Citadel of the Kremlin. Just a, a, as, about as much as I do, as I do any other tier 10 like the Montana um, less than the Yami because the Yami if you catch its side it's kind of just dead but you know like the Montana and the Conqueror and the Republic I've, I've, I've gotten Citadel hits on there just as much as those ships I don't think it's that big of a deal but some people do I think that's because if the criminal player knows what he's going to do he's not going to give you his side and he will stay angled like a smart boy which is obviously how the criminal's meant to be played 
but you know it's the point isn't you know trying to get through him being angled you should try to flank him and catch his sides and that's how i get to citadel kremlin so much or you goad him into brawling because i do play gk a lot and you get at his broadside you let him blast you because you're in a gk and you have that turtle back armor and yeah you'll take a big hit but you'll out out outright just evaporate him so i don't think it's that big of a deal it's easy to get to if you can f get onto his side you know you shouldn't be trying to fight a Kremlin on his terms, you should, you should try to fight him on your terms if you can. But again, if he's smart, he's not going to let you get it aside, so I can't understand where that sentiment comes in. Alright, uh, AA, Kremlin has like god tier AA, has a hundred, an A rating of a hundred without anything even thrown into it, so yeah. GK, I mean, AA isn't that great, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. AA, if you don't have god tier AA uh, in modern World of Warships, it, it's kind of just, you know, hit and miss i mean yeah <laughs> that's all i could have to say about that um torpedo protection kremlin has like 46 percent torpedo damage reduction gk has 25 yeah also kremlin does have 108,000 uh, hit points while the gk has 105,000 hit points so there's that too and, oh, I forgot to mention this, the turrets, I can't believe I almost forgot to mention that, the turrets on the Kremlin, they can rotate at 180 degrees in 30 seconds, which is far faster than the um, GK can, GK is around 40-ish seconds. So, the ship, the Kremlin, is larger, well, it's not larger than the GK, GK is still the biggest ship in the game. It's a large ship, it's not very fast, uh, if you don't have the speed flag on there, its top speed's around 28 knots. But that doesn't really matter because you can literally fire your guns on one side of your ship and by the time they've rotated around to the other side of the ship, they're ready to go again. So you don't really have to worry about trying to turn your ship to move your turrets like you do on the GK sometimes because the turrets do take a while to rotate on, uh, on GK. So it does have a big advantage there. And am I missing anything else? Oh yes, the damage con does have the Soviet damage con. It has a limited amount of charges but they're very, very, very good charges and they cool down in about 30-ish seconds but they're only active for like 20 seconds as well but they're very good and if you have the special commander Kuznetsov you actually have six damage cons and five heals because when you get down your health gets down to 10 percent with Kuznetsov you get a free damage con and a free repair and that's saved my butt more times than I can count with uh with the Kremlin because yeah, I mean, that's such a huge advantage in terms of special captains, where if you look at the other special captains, their skills are much harder to activate, whereas Kuznetsov is just like, nah, I don't feel like dying right now, and then he pops his special abilities. So, Kremlin. Very good shells, very fast turret rotation time, god tier AA, and the special damage con, and the bow armor that actually wraps around the front of the ship. Versus GK, who has good secondaries, is nine suitable from close range and oh has hydro so again depending upon how you're looking at that you can say well gk has the advantage there because you can't sit it all gk in a brawl and it has good secondaries or you can say well the the kremlin has much more accurate guns with much better pins its turrets rotate in 30 seconds flat and has god tier aa and you can get kuznetsov on um, Kremlin, who is arguably much more useful than the German Special Commander, Luchens, is on Kerr first. Currently in the game, that's the only Special Commander we have for the, the Germans, and he's kind of meh on battleships, but, you know, I still keep him on there because of his secondary armament talent. So, Russian bias, is it a thing? Looking at the two comparisons we have today, you could say yes and you could say no. Because you could say, again, like I said, with the small list, it depends on how you're looking at it. Same with the Kremlin. But, and I'm trying to be, like, as op as objectionable as I can right now. I'm trying to not give in to the saying, oh, yes, there's clearly Russian bias. And I'm trying not, not to give in to the saying, oh, no, there's not Russian bias. But just from looking at the ups and downs of the two ships, the trade-offs that they give, that they have to, um, the trade-offs that they have in order to get their abilities and their characteristics... You can look at something like small lands, it seems like they're giving up not a whole lot to gain a large advantage. The same with Kremlin. You know, Kremlin, the ship is large and unmaneuverable, and that's the what you're giving up for it being tanky, but 
the other 30 second turret rotation time, so that doesn't really matter all that much. Whereas in the GK, you're giving up the ability to get pinned at close range, but since the GK's armor is so chunky, you get pinned at longer ranges all day. And the Wooster, you're giving up the ability to have heavy hitting guns, to have rapid firing guns, but their shells are very floaty, so at longer ranges you're not that accurate. Whereas in the Smolensk, instead of being floaty, the shells are quite quick and very good at pretty much any range, except if you put like that 19 kilometer build on there, then they get a little floaty, but again, that's at like maximum range where most small links don't even bother pushing the range out that far. So, I would say, yes, there's a little bit of Russian bias, but it's not as crazy as some people make it out to be, because the ships do do have downsides. It's just that they don't have as many downsides as they probably should when you compare them to ships of other nations and other lines. At least that's my opinion. And again, this is just looking at four ships. If you look at all of the Russian ships, I'm sure... And from what I've seen from playing this game for, you know, the past three years, most of the Russian ships are actually pretty fairly balanced. But you do get the oddball, like... Kremlin and Smolensk and Stalingrad every now and then, which are just really powerful for their tiers, and the Kremlin, at least they've just tried to bring it down a little bit. I'm sure they'll they'll probably bring it down a little bit more in the future. Smolensk, I don't know why they just won't refuse to tweak Smolensk a little bit. They just, I don't know, they're, they're choosing to remove it rather than just tweak it a little bit. I guess since it's a reward ship, they don't want to touch it, but... Yeah, I guess we'll I guess we'll find out eventually what's up with small lens, but who knows how long that'll be. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. We're getting to about the 24, 25 minute mark, but before I edit this down a little bit. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about Russian bots. You think it's a big problem? You think it's not a big problem? What do you think about? It? Let me know. Anyway, guys, I hope you're having a great Wednesday. I hope to catch all of you guys in the next one. <laughs>